Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Tomlinson. I'm the research director at SII. Um, delighted to announce Catherine Blue from um, KPMG. Catherine uh, runs the sustainability uh, services for uh, the Americas for KPMG. We're delighted to have KPMG to be uh, one of our sponsors, uh, our lead sponsor today. Catherine's been doing some leading work on the uh, TCFD initiative, looking at the implications of that overseeing the biennial KPMG Corporate Responsibility Disclosure um, Survey. And today she'll give uh, an introduction to her work on the uh, SDGs. So delighted to announce uh, Catherine Blue from KPMG. Thank you. All right, good afternoon. Uh, today, I wanted to spend some time think, uh, talking a little bit about sustainable development goals. Um, this is really um, based on our recent thought leadership that KPMG published uh, in the last month. Um, many of you may be familiar with the sustainable development goals. Some of you may not. Uh, I'll go through that in just a little bit. But what we really found was that in talking to our clients um, and in looking at the things they were struggling with around corporate reporting, there really was not an established framework or process or benchmark to start looking at migrating corporate reporting over to uh, sustainable development goals in that framework. Um, what they were very interested in was what good reporting looks like from the standpoint of using the SDGs to help align what they're reporting from their corporate reporting standpoint. There was a lot of client uncertainty that we saw around where to start, what we actually need to do. I think it gets complicated a little bit by the fact that there are admittedly a lot of different standards that are out there, so GRI, SASB, there's TCFD disclosures. Um, so let's move that to the side. Those are all very good uh, frameworks, but what companies are trying to look at is how do they realign everything that they're reporting around the SDGs. Um, so what we tried to do was we looked at the largest 250, the G250 companies globally. Um, we wanted to see what good looks like, um, so that was the main mission. We wanted to see how the largest companies were performing in, in terms of their reporting, and uh, what the companies were doing well and what lessons could be learned by other reporters as they're trying to migrate and look at their reporting to be aligned to the SDGs. And I would also say from the investor perspective, what this is starting to do is provide a framework for discussion around what are the longer term sustainability goals that your company is making. Um, so it really is a, a good basis for conversation around the ESG investor issue as well. Um, you're also seeing funds starting to kind of align how they're um, looking at the aspects of their funds and what parts of the SDGs that it contributes to. So I'll start with um, here's the SDGs, what it looks like and what, what matters. If you want a copy of it, my email's up there. Feel free to reach out to me and I'll send you a copy of our thought leadership. It's also online. You can search by that particular topic, but I'm happy to, to send it directly to you. Many of you are familiar with the SDGs, so it's been best said that these are the, the 2030 goals, if you will, for the Earth. And you know, kind of have to bring that down to the next level of what's practical and what's relevant for companies in terms of their reporting and their business strategies. These are 2030 targets that were set by the UN, as many of you know, in 2015. Underpinning all of these um, 17 very important SDGs are about 169 targets um, that are underneath these that support the, the 17 SDGs. The um, objective of this was really to in the same way that the Paris Agreement allowed companies to align their capital against very uh, necessary goals for climate reduction. The goal was also to have the private sector employ a lot of its business processes, its funding, and its scale towards addressing these very important, very high level and aspirational needs from a global standpoint. So you can see those, how aspirational they are. No poverty, zero hunger, gender equality, you know, all very great goals, but very high level goals. And so um, the challenge is, and the struggle is, how do companies get from taking what they're doing and putting it in this framework and quantifying how they're contributing against these goals? Um, you know, what is the benefit of allowing this kind of lens on it? It really allows companies to, to strengthen how they're reporting. It strengthens engagement with stakeholders and investors because you can have this conversation about this higher level strategy alignment. It gives a little bit more of a long-term view. And it also gives common language and really more of a shared purpose when you're talking about it in terms of the sustainable development goals. So we looked at a number of leading companies to look at 
exactly what they're doing. And you can see some of the um, some of the, the companies here that we featured from the Global 250. I'll get into a couple of these examples. I won't get into all of them. And really what we wanted to look at was the quality of the reporting. And we wanted to have a way to basically look at uh, these different aspects, and we really couched it around the understanding, the prioritization of the SDGs, and the measurement. And in each of these, we had three different areas. For the understanding, we looked at the business case. Are they articulating the business case? Is the CEO making public commitments? Um, firm public commitments? Uh, are they looking at the business impact? And on the prioritization side, how are they identifying them? What methodology are they using? Um, how are they setting the targets? And then you can see for measurement, um, are the, the goals smart and are they using the correct indicators? So that's the framework that we use for scoring as we looked at each of the, the reporters. So in terms of the results, I'll just go through these quickly. Um, the vast majority of the Global 250 reports that we looked at, um, so 76% of them, which is a seemingly positive report, are looking at the business impact of the SDGs on their business. But upon a closer look, if you flip the lens on that, most of them, if not all of them, were talking about the positive impacts they can make on the SDGs, not really talking about the negative side or the risks that could jeopardize those SDGs. So it was very much of a more of a one-sided positive, and, and it's a great place to start, but I think over time you're going to see a little bit more balanced reporting in that area. 39% uh, uh, reference are, are referencing this from a CEO perspective. We saw the highest rate of this in automotive, with about 75% of the largest automotive companies stating the CEO commitment to the SDGs. And from a business case standpoint, as you would expect, that's a pretty low per percentage rate um, on companies that are looking at the business case for SDG reporting. We saw that mostly in Europe, and we would expect that result. I think a lot of the frameworks for being able to measure social impact and social capital impact are starting to evolve more quickly now. I think we'll see that, that number migrate and change quite a bit, um, but that's really the the uh, emerging inability to really to measure that piece of the impact from a business case standpoint. Um, one of the examples we highlighted in this area on public commitment and CEO commitment was BHP Billiton. Their CEO has, has made very firm statements around uh, two years ago their commitment to the SDGs with respect to their environmental and social goals and their sustainability reporting. The second phase of it was actually setting their goals for BHP Billiton, specifically around the SDGs and referencing that. Um, so that was a good example that we highlighted in the thought leadership around the understanding of the sustainable development goals and really getting to the CEO commitment for that. In terms of prioritizing the SDGs, we had about 85% were identifying the most relevant SDGs to their business. The challenge with this is when we drilled down and looked into it a little bit more, 25% of those companies said all 17 were applicable. And so uh, you can imagine the struggle if you're trying to align your business processes and impact around all 17 of those SDGs. And while you could probably make a remote case around each of them, I think all of us could, um, that's not really beneficial when it, terms, when it comes to trying to prioritize um, goals around sustainable development goals. 54% um, of them, looked at the process to disclose um, actually how they're prioritizing. And this is, I think, of most interest to at least companies in the room that are um, addressing this process. So how do you go about doing this? We had about 54% that were looking at mapping SDGs to the value chain of the business. So they really looked at every aspect of the business and where the SDGs connected uh, across their value chain. We had about 23% that were looking at the company's CSR metrics and reports as a way to align those CSR metrics. And then um, in terms of the SDGs, including them in a materiality analysis, that was about 20%. We're seeing a little bit more growth on that piece around materiality. Targets, we only had 20% of them that were looking at the underlying targets underneath the 17 SDGs. Um, Pfizer was a good example that we highlighted here. Um, they were able to take one of the SDGs around well-being, branch it out to six other related SDGs, so they really established their primary and then six other related SDGs. Uh, Telefonica used a, a systems analysis, so they looked at the interconnection and the push and pull among the different SDGs. Water and energy are, are good common examples, but they tried to do it from systems analysis and a little bit more um, system rather than linear. These were the uh, most um, 
reported SDGs, as, as one would expect, climate action, the uh, decent work, economic growth, and good health and well-being. Uh, the least attention was being paid to zero hunger and life on land and life below water. Um, I would anticipate that probably a number of companies, unless they're kind of in the food agriculture sector, struggling a little bit to directly connect their business to the hunger piece. Um, so those are the, the different um, priorities that we saw in terms of the trends. Measuring the SDG performance, so we had 35% uh, of them that were looking at um, SDG-related performance goals that we saw articulating those goals that are related to the SDGs. Healthcare really led this. Oil and gas was at the, at the very bottom if you looked at the sector split. And I can get more sector information if anybody um, wants that. Only 9% were setting the SMART target, so the specific, measurable, you know, the rest of the acronym. The time-bound piece is time-bound already by the SDG goals, which is 2030. Um, but only 9% were looking at SMART targets. 24% um, were using the uh, indicators to measure. And again, we had healthcare at the top and oil and gas at the bottom for those. Um, when we applied the quality results, you can kind of see there was much higher quality as you started at the beginning of the understanding, the SDGs, then moving towards prioritization um, got a little bit lower, and then measuring got a little bit lower than that. So um, as with all the surveys that we do, we've been surveying corporate reporting for you know, over 20 years and looking at the trends there. We do generally see that these continue to migrate and get more sophisticated over time. Um, so we'll be tracking this over time as well and expect to see that move. So in terms of recommendations and learnings for SG, SDG reporters, since we have about so got two minutes remaining, um, what we're really uh, wanting companies to do is just really first starting with the understanding. So start this conversation around how relevant the SDGs are to your business. This is another layer on top of or a lens on top of what you're already doing with respect to your corporate responsibility reporting. Really engaging the CEO and getting the CEO's top level um, public, impact, public support. Um, to make sure that's consistent and that message is over the long term as well. And looking at options for how you start to look at the business impacts initially, at least as a first cut. Moving to prioritizing the SDGs. Um, there are very many different ways to do this. Right now there's not a right or a wrong way to do it. It's really just looking at um, the most relevant SDGs and um, trying to, to hone those down where you can make a real business impact and not necessarily feeling the need to address all of them or even ones that are, have a little bit of a disconnect to your main business mission. Um, prioritization methods are really not one size fits all. This is very much an emerging area. And uh, most importantly, trying to take a look below those 17 SDGs to the 169 goal targets that are underneath those help you understand the SDGs a little bit more. Um, measuring SDG performance, I talked a little bit about that, but those really need to be based on your understanding of what the business impact and the impact to uh, the environment and social impacts are. And then being able to collaborate, and we talked, we had a bunch of, a lot of case studies that were in here, but how do you get that into an organization and motivate an organization to really take this up? And a lot of executives are starting to align um, some of these areas relevant to personal and business goals, and so when that happens, um, you get a little bit, little bit more traction than you would have otherwise. Um, I'll just leave it here. Um, our report talks about this in a little bit more detail since we have 15 minutes to address global SDGs. Phase one, understand it. Phase two, reach agreement on which SDGs you're going to focus on and which ones you're not. You could even just start with one to begin with um, and move forward. Design appropriate performance targets and measurement systems that align to the SDGs and then really um, understand how you're gonna start communicating that. And that could be through your reporting, through your conversations with investors, um, you know, through uh, everything that your company is talking about in the, in the CSR area. So with that, I think it's lunch after you had this review of the SDGs, but thank you so much. We have uh, box lunches over here, but they're really cool box lunches. They're not just the standard fare. And I just want to remind folks, uh, this is a great report inside your folder. KPMG did ESG strategy in the long view. And before that, is Stephen Brown here? Stephen? Stephen, can you raise your hand? Great um, support from Stephen since day one on, on our advisory board, and so we're grateful for everything that KPMG has done. And Stephen, you in particular, your insight on the 
advisory board has just uh, had a great impact, so thank you.